They need to be particularly flexible to do some movements in jiu-jitsu. So if I'm here like this, and you're struggling to bring your leg over the head, yeah, often it's because this leg here is locked down really tight. Now I'm trying to separate, I mean, I'm flexible enough to be able to do it anyway. But if you're struggling, bring both legs up. Yeah, because where you feel your lack of flexibility is when your legs are separating. Yeah, right, so scarf hold is a classic example. You know, like this, yeah, right? And people are like, oh, I'm not flexible and I can't get my leg over his head. Well, bring both your legs up together, yeah? If your legs stay close to each other, you're not using any flexibility. Or if you can do this, <laughs> yeah? If you can do that, you can do jiu-jitsu. I mean, Pedro Sauer is like arguably the best coach in the world and he can't touch his toes. <laughs> you know, he's got incredibly dexterous feet, but like really strong but tight hands. It's probably his lower back. Yeah, we can talk about it sometime, Pedro, about your hands. <laughs> but, right? Okay. But yeah, like try and find an easier way. You don't have, yes, it's, it's useful to. And I always talk about like the, the, the triangle of fitness, yeah, right? You've got like aerobic cardio stuff and you've got flexibility and you've got strength. So you have this triangle. And for jiu-jitsu, you want to sit in the middle. Reasonably flexible, reasonably strong, reasonably fit, yeah? If you're like super cardio guy, but really weak, but flexible, you can have problems. If you've got, if you're super strong, not flexible and no cardio, you've got problems. So the best place to sit is right in the middle. And that's where I pick on you, because you're like this big strong guy, right? Not so flexible, not so cardio. Like not great, yeah? Like you're always trying to move yourself more towards being a balanced athlete. And that's all you need for jiu-jitsu, is to be like, do a few push-ups, lift a couple of little weights, like nothing crazy, you know, and be flexible. Yeah, it'd be good to be able to touch your toes, like that's that's awesome. You know, hip dexterity would be good, you know. Nothing crazy, you don't have to like be 10th planet, you know, dead orchid kind of flexible. You don't have to do that. If you take it too far in that way, like when I was training with Halson in 2002, he told me all for, for using my flexibility like a strong guy uses strength. I was stupid flexible. You know, I could, I'd be fighting here, some guy passed my guard, I wouldn't even, no, I can't do it now, right? But I did yoga non-stop for like two years, like three times a day, and I'd bust my shin, <clears throat> so I couldn't do anything. And I could bring my foot over like the back of my head and stop people, yeah? And there's a picture of me in a comp where I'm choking the guy from half guard, so I've got a leg deep in half guard, the guy's all the way forwards with my legs behind my head and I'm still choking him. I was happy to, like with this foot on the floor behind my head, didn't bother me at all. And I'm like, ah, oh, really, you're gonna come down here? <laughs> right? But Helson told me off, he goes, you're using your flexibility like a strong guy uses his strength. He goes, like you should be moving your hips instead. So when I'm here like this, I should never let people get that far past and then do something about it, I should be tracking them with my hips. You know, like Helson is super flexible, like stupid flexible for his, for his age. Ridiculous, it's like Cirque du Soleil flexible, you don't believe what you're seeing. But, it's good to have it, but it doesn't mean that you should do bad jiu-jitsu because of it. And that's what I was guilty of, yeah? Anyway, a little bit more practice with this, then we'll start rolling. One, two, three.